Hello, this is Sizwe Podcast. My name is Patricia and I'm with my co-host Agnes. Hello. Thank you so much. And today we are so honored to have someone special in our studio. She's in the person of Councillor Jennifer Rice. She's in Ward Epi Kanipioche. If I'm not pronouncing it well, Jennifer would, would take it from me and do it properly. Honorable, you are welcome. Oh, so, thank you so much, and for having me here. I I was very very excited and to looking for this opportunity to chat with those wonderful ladies <laughs> here. <laughs> and uh, I'm Jennifer Rice, city councillor, and for Word EP Kokani PLC, which is cover and South Edmonton and part of South West Edmonton as well. Thank you. This is Sizwe Podcast, and we invited Jennifer here today because most of us as immigrants, we don't really know what goes on in the city or who is in charge of what. Or when you hear the word city councillor, how much do you know? What do they do? So today, I will start by asking Jennifer, who is a city councillor and what do they do? Thank you for that questions as you say as you said and many many immigrants come to our city this is actually a very beautiful city i am first generation immigrants oh, original wow. from china wow. so english is my second language as well awesome. and then i actually personally experience uh, from bottom start over mm-hmm. learning english and learning skills mm-hmm. and how to be adaptable and to this new country. Yes. So you can, and I can, and every immigrant can. Mm -hmm. We are proud of you, Jennifer. Thank you very much. That is actually one of the reasons why I'm running for city councilor. Awesome. Because like you just said, if I can, that means you can. That That means means every immigrant and come to this country and looking for the better life, and looking for the different life experience, they can do the same thing. Awesome, awesome. And Jennifer, if I may ask, how long have you been in Canada? Um, probably immigrant Canada over fifteen years. Over fifteen years. Yes. Wow! 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 wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and we did, I've been we here did, for twenty years. Yes, within that span. Jennifer has become a city <laughs> councillor. Wow. I said wow. And she's the so first immigrant. First yes, the first generation immigrant. First generation immigrant. immigrant. Guys, immigrant. Yes. yes, that's correct. The wow. first generation Im- immigrant. I think we some, some, some of us say it, but how many of us also understand that? That mm-hmm. I came here as already an adult, and I am the first person in my family that has come here. So my children will become a second generation, generation. immigrant. Jennifer mm-hmm. is a first generation, generation immigrant. immigrant. And she is a city councillor. I will take the question back to her. What does city councillors do? City councillor is a city governor. Mm. And we have 12 city councillors across the entire city and across our mayor. And that means there are 13 members in city council. For city council, we follow the govern, we follow the municipality government act, and to governor to govern the city and specifically and to make the policy decisions and those including budget decisions, including how we operate our city's policies, and based on the direction city council provided. And city administration implemented. Oh, wow. That is how our city uh, managed. Managed. Yes, so we have two different functionality and s- governance body. That mm-hmm. is the city council and the city administration. Wow. Guys, yeah. if you just join us, this is Sisway way Podcast. Today we are so honored to be speaking to Jennifer Rice. She is a first-generation immigrant, and she is a city councillor at Ward Blackfoot. The big name, I, I, w- I want to stay away from it. With <laughs> Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> While integrating, Jennifer, what were the challenges that you really had that you thought, this is not easy? 
this is really a challenge. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. Um, specifically, and give, I'm first generation immigrant to become city council, councilor. Wow. Uh, as you may know, uh, in Edmund history, I'm one of the first yes, yes. minority mm-hmm. female mm. counselor yes. in Edmonton history. Awesome. And specifically, like you mentioned earlier, we immigrant to this country, we already are that. Yes. We already have established the culture, mm-hmm. language, yes. and we bring our kids come here. Yes. And then that personal experience as an immigrant to become counselor this journey. I'm so glad today I got this opportunity. I could share this journey. Aww. And because I really want so, so many, so many Edmontonians, mm-hmm. I want you to know, if I can do this, mm-hmm. no matter how challenging it is, you can do it. Mm-hmm. Jennifer, is, is before she came here, yeah. I read she was a professor of one of the subjects that I am so scared. Actually, it gives me <laughs> mumps, like my cheek will, 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 will swell every time I'm doing mathematics. Jennifer was a professor of a university before she came to Canada 15 years ago and has risen to become a city councillor. I, I, I am my, I'm on, in, in my chair, I, I feel so proud. The first, first generation immigrant to rise to that position. What can't you do? <laughs> I am so proud of you. And Patricia, you have another question before I bring my question about what Jennifer stands for in her position. Okay, being a lady, Jennifer, an immigrant and being a lady, what are the challenges that you see w- with the governance in Canada or with the city? So... <sighs> There are many challenges, there are. Mm-hmm. but I would like to say um, the first challenge as a female counselor, first generation immigrant face is a culture and a language. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We all come from with different backgrounds. We all come with different culture, mm-hmm. but how this culture to be refracted and in the decision-making process, because every day as a counselor, I have to make so many, so many decisions. I understand the decision, every de- every single decision I made will impact our city, will impact our Edmontonians. Yes. Mm-hmm. How to balance my understanding with all the issues city facing, all the challenges our city facing, to balance that what our people, our community needs, and with the different limited resources we have to balance, Mm -hmm. and also balance the impact and how this decision could impact the city and the people. I think that is the biggest challenge. As a, as, as a yeah. counselor, and, and we make decisions every day. Yes, yes. <laughs> wow. We have to, we have to face him. Thank you so much, I, guys. If you guys, if you just join us, we are speaking to Jennifer Rice. She's the World Blackfoot counselor in Edmonton here. And there's something that I always say that when I came here. I, there are so many things that I didn't understand. It took me years to be able to understand Canadian culture, let alone to rise to become a city councillor. I saw in one of your goals that what, is pa- what you are passionate about is to help all Edmontonians who pay taxes to have the worth of their money. That every money that comes from every person here in their tax do- dollar, you have to make sure that money is doing what it's doing. And today is the first time I am actually learning what city councillors do. So how do you manage or administer to be able to achieve that goal that all Edmontonians are getting their money's worth? So I think there are a few points here I, I want 
I want to start to say I I'm glad that you heard I'm glad that you heard this say the words, uh, black. Yes. So I I just want to tell a little bit a little bit the meaning of my word Very names. Very good. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that. And because that. my my word name is Ipiko Kani Ah, Ipiko look at the day. one she's saying it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to learn how to say it. <laughs> then many many my constituents ask me. What does that name mean? Mm-hmm. So I told them the meaning for that. That is indigenous name. Yes, is mm-hmm. come from Cree language. Mm-hmm. What does that specific means? There, they are uh, indigenous people. Mm-hmm. They're doing celebration for the hunting, hunting buffalo on the land of Black Blackfoot, mm-hmm. and then every year. And for celebration that hunting brings on the, this mind. And I think this name, indigenous name, really refract our indigenous culture and also refract the land. We are on traditional indigenous land. And this is for everyone we are here. That yes. is the meaning of the word name. And as you probably know, in the past, our city's word name is all the number. Yes, so they yeah, I knew, I knew it's what seven, what three, what so. Yeah. Now we have the indigenous names attached to the word, which is very honoring. Like we are honoring this land and the people who first came here. Yes, so that's the first thing I want to say. That and go to your next question. My next question is yeah, go I to your next question about my next the question is your goal. Like what yeah. you are passionate about. That's Edmontonians should have their money's worth when they pay their taxes, and what that's what you are helping the city. Yeah. That's part of your passion every day. That's my my passion <laughs> every day. Yes, that's yes. right. Serve people and serve community is my passion every day. Yes, and then I even like I work like every day twelve to sixteen hours. Wow! Wow! wow. Average twelve to sixteen hours. No evening. No weekend. No. V- vacation wow but i i never feel tired because you love what you are doing i'm not i uh, yes i love what i'm doing uh that is why and i am in this position mm-hmm. so i want to answer your question regarding the taxpayer dollars how we make sure we spend that taxpayer dollars really provide the value and to the taxpayers awesome and as you know our city provide public service and programs to Edmontonians. Mm-hmm. But where is the money from? And for us to provide that, so we call that revenue. Mm-hmm. And for cities revenue, our revenue majority come from our taxpayer dollars money. Yes. And another portion of user fee. And so far in 2023 to 2026 budgets, and we, our revenue, over 58% of revenue come from our taxpayers' money. That's a lot. So we collect the tax money and use this money to provide the services and for the people who need it. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So my goal and my focus, and since I decided to run as a city councilor, mm-hmm. I want to make sure our money you paid and received the you equal to the to what you paid mm-hmm. that means we provided the services match what you paid for the tax dollars awesome. and then by how we how we achieve that goal. yes how and then my focus is to focus on our city's core services mm-hmm. that include mm-hmm. probably ask oh, what are our yes, cities? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go to ask that. Yes. That uh, is, yeah. Our city's call services, w- we have a very clear definition in MGA. That means Municipal Government mm-hmm. Act. That mm-hmm. is already defined what is our city's call services. Mm-hmm. And then, as a generally speaking, the call services including snow removal. Mm-hmm. Okay. The snow yeah. removal. Yes. Yeah, snow. <laughs> 
That's then, really, then, really then, then I think the, the, this year the city is is is, is having a holiday. Yeah, it's going to save a lot of money. <laughs> yes, yeah, snow removal and mm-hmm. then also the basic uh, infrastructure capital capital spending uh, to make sure we have the good condition nodes, node waste, and also the waste connection. With the connection is a lot of pieces, mm-hmm. uh, also public transit services. Mm-hmm. So there are many, many services that are, are considered core, yes. as mm-hmm. a core services. Core services and in specifically the city. our city. If you look at our city structure and city website, you can see 73 to 77 business line. That we call the line of the business mm-hmm. that is refract what is our city's core services, core services. we are provide. Patricia? ETS is part of the services that you provide. And I'm so glad that you have uh, disabled other transit, which is DATS. The DATS. And most of us in our countries, we never had that. Yes. So yeah. can you tell us more about the disabled other transit? Uh, our services, our city services is for everyone mm-hmm. in the city. We mm-hmm. want to make sure we have that equitable mm-hmm. services for everyone, no matter. <coughs> so this type of services really ensures the access and for the people who with limited ability mobility mm-hmm. and yes. have the easy access and to the city services we provide. Wow. Mm-hmm. So because our city, one of the fundamental value is diversity and inclusion. Awesome. That yes. means we are built the city for everyone. Mm-hmm. Everyone, wow. yeah. Guys, if you just join us, this is Sizwe Podcast. My name is Agnes. I am here with my co-host, Patricia. And today we are so honored to be speaking to Councillor Jennifer Rice. We, we, we have so much, much questions for her, but I wanted us so much to concentrate on what brings her joy, what drives her. And I saw on her profile that she wants Edmontonians to have their money's worth by helping the city concentrate and do the core services that all of us need. We will bring the curtains down, but I will go back to Jennifer. Every time we bring important people like her, we want to give her the podium to say something or what is on her heart before Patricia will come in and we will go. Thank you. Jennifer, what do you want to tell Edmontonians? We are doing this podcast in Edmonton, and a lot of people in your world are watching you. What do you want to tell us? Oh, I think I think I have so many things <laughs> I want to say. <laughs> I have so many things I wanted to say, and to uh, people who live in my world, yes, for to people like who like whom I represent, and also to Edmontonians mm-hmm. and across the entire city. I want to say as an individual, as an individual, I really care about every human being. We need love and care yes. and for us to have better life, for us live in a quality life. And also I want to say as a, as a counselor, as a counselor, the reason why I run this, mm-hmm. uh, wh- why I be from the first generation immigrant, yeah, and uh, to become the counselor, why wow. I want to be in this position to do this job to help our city. Mm-hmm. So I remember the uh, first time and back to 2021, why I was decided to run. Mm-hmm. Um, I was interviewed by media, say why you want to run this. I told them very clear. In our city, we have so many, so many minority communities. Yes. We have so many people come from different language and a different culture background. But I feel for those communities, for those people coming to Edmonton, call here as a home, we are actually underrepresented. Yes around the decision-making table. Yes. Mm-hmm. How to make sure our voice to be heard. And because we are part of this city, yes. 
We call this city as a home. home we yes. want mm-hmm. this city want to, be. to become the great place, better place, and for everyone. Mm-hmm. And how to make sure those communities' voice to be heard around decision making table. I want to be one that. Yes. That is one reason. Another reason, as a first gem- generation immigrants, as many of you probably will agree with me, how challenging, how difficult uh, we come into the new country. Yes. We are already has our own career, mm-hmm. our own life yes. as an adult. As in adults. our home country. Yes, yes. We come here, we have to change. Hmm. We have to change our language. Yes. We have to even change how we thinking, how we talk, yes. how we communicate with yes. others, how we interact with others. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes we face so many, so many challenges because yeah. of how we talk, mm-hmm. how we communicate, how mm-hmm. we interact yes. with people, be interpreted as a different way. Yes. And due to the culture difference. Y- yes, yes. Um, I know uh, as a first generation immigrant, we may not never get to the point like the local native speaker, how we speak, mm-hmm. how we talk, how we talk, and how we interact as a people. But I do not want to say our second generation, our next generation, they are struggling as we are struggling as a first generation. I do not want to say that happen. But how to achieve that goal? Is to have you. How to achieve that goal? Yes. And as I told the media, I said, I want wrong this city council because I want to use my campaign activities really set up example to inspire our community future leaders and for them not have the same experience as our first generation immigrants Uh, experience there. That is why and in my focus I advocating and support youth leadership. Awesome. I really want to provide the opportunity for them awesome. to get engaged, involved in this society. Yes. And then after I become counselor, my passion for this refract, I provide a casual and a summer employment opportunity for students. I am actually the first counselor who hired summer students and wow. back to 2022. Awesome. Awesome. And then in my students, I, I hired indigenous students. Mm-hmm. I hired students and from minority community background as well. Awesome. Jennifer, re- re- representation matters a lot. So what would you encourage the minorities to do, especially women in this country? Awesome. What would you say to them? Women leadership is a larger topic yes and <laughs> yes, what I'm, I'm really <laughs> really passionate about very good and then you probably saw from my uh social media yes and, and then the leadership conference in po- leadership leadership a woman leadership mm-hmm. conference i was there as a speaker for women we received some bias we received some bias. Yes, yeah, we go through a lot. And when we grow up, and also, and when we participate and in the public service, but our women, we have that potential. Mm-hmm. We have that skills. We can equally contribute to our society. But the challenge is and how we can do that to overcome all the bias, yes, yes. overcome all the barriers, yes. and specifically as a minority woman, mm-hmm. overcome even our language barriers, yes. mm-hmm. our yes. culture barriers, yes. to achieve that goal and then really contribute to the city. Uh, to me, um, when it's not only uh, during my career as a counselor and uh, during my entire professional ca- career, I always try to set the example as a woman and for 
all my fellow women. women yeah. See, we have the ability to do the same thing to the society. And we should never give up awesome. our dream, awesome. our goal awesome. for our life. Awesome. Never, never give her up. Give up, no matter how challenge, how difficult, and also I believe, as a woman, when we stand together, we in are connection. stronger. In like today, look at, look at <laughs> oh, look at us, <laughs> look at us. When mm. we stand up together, and when we have the same goal, when we support each other, mm. specifically we support each other's dream. And be one kind to another mm -hmm. when they need the help. So I just want to share a little bit experience back to the COVID. COVID. Yes. And it starts uh, like back to 2000, 2020. 2020. And yeah. because really uh, the COVID is starting like the late 2019. Yes. And yeah. then in Canada here and in 2000. By March 2020, it, it became a thing in mm -hmm. Canada. Yes. Yes. So during our time, uh, I actually, I realized that many, many people are facing the challenge. Mm -hmm. So I did the volunteer mm -hmm. initiative. Mm -hmm. I initiated a volunteer activity to help women. Awesome. And specifically the women with the, with the children. Mm -hmm. And when the COVID breakdown, um, lockdown happened, women work in the home, and has to deal with all the, their kids for the schools, classes, mm -hmm. and the many women feel extremely, extremely challenging. Yes. So I started a coaching program. Oh. And this coaching program, because I took the course, mm -hmm. I received the executive coaching certificate. No. <laughs> she wears many hats. My <laughs> <Yes>. goodness. <laughs> so I use that skills I learned from that certificate program and help many women and voluntarily to help them. Awesome. And during that COVID-19 <coughs> period, um, I believe as long as we believe ourselves, oh. mm -hmm. we as believe we ourselves, yes. mm -hmm. never give up, mm -hmm. focus our goal, focus our dream. Thank you. Together. We will get there. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel, I, I f I feel like clapping. Guys, <laughs> 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 yes, just join us. We are bringing the curtain to a close. But today, I feel so fulfilled mm -hmm. speaking to Jennifer. And I want Patricia to say the last word, and then we will end today's show. Jennifer, we are honored to have you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for representing minority women. Yes. We are proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. But I do want to say, for me to get to here, I experienced lots, lots of challenges. Yes. Mm -hmm. Never, never gave up. Never. Mm -hmm. Never gave up. I want you to know when I first come to Edmonton, I want, I want to rent an apartment. I brought my daughter walk on the street behind White Avenue. Mm -hmm. You know why? And because there are many, many uh, apartments that put the vacant sign there. Mm -hmm. So I thought I couldn't find some apartment there. I walked there and saw the vacant sign that I called them. Do you know what happened? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When people heard my your, your, your accent, accent. Yes, mm -hmm. your accent. Heard my accent, they hang up the phone. Mm -hmm. And then I spent one month, I couldn't find any apartments to do. And every day, my daughter, after my daughter's school, I took her walk on that street. One day, I remember, and my daughter was very tired during that walking for yeah. us to lo looking for apartment. Mm -hmm. She lost her bus pass. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to go back to sidewalk to all the roads to try to find that bus pass. Because mm -hmm. Back to that time, if she lost the bus pass and she cannot take a bus, and they said, I said, okay, maybe we can just find it. And we 
look that wrong, I will try to find a weekend wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, both of us feel disappointed. At the same time, the most disappointed is nobody even wants to rent apartment to us because my accent. Yes. Mm-hmm. And wow. they finally, I find the place where I find it. Do you know where I find a place? No. So one international student who rent apartment near to U of A mm-hmm. has a living room empty. So I took my daughter living in that living room for one month until the next bedroom room available. Available. Mm-hmm. And for us. Wow. I I did I you know, I did not share this type of experience mm-hmm. with no. many people. Yes. But I want to share the reason for me want to share this is people see me right now in the concert procession, but they never thought I am with everyone as you the same. Difference. I experience that type of challenge difficult mm-hmm. as every ge- first generation immigrant. It's the same. I learned English. I went to ESL class. Wow. Mm-hmm. I received lots of help as well. I would like to say because lots of help from strangers mm-hmm. and also from the nonprofit organization and who help the newcomers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Probably like yeah, yeah, many, like of yes. many of in this building. Yes. Mm-hmm. I want to give back. Wow. I want to give back. I want people to know we come here, yes, very difficult, very challenged. But at the same time, they believe this world has kindness. This world has love. This world has caring. I received those. And right now I want to give back. Wow. That's his w- another reason for me to run after I become a counselor, I really want to make sure I can represent first generation immigrants. I can represent minority communities because their voice deserves to be heard. Awesome. Thank you. You know, like every time we do a show and we say we give the our guests a chance to talk, that is when you get the nuggets. And I am really honored that you you told us the last part of the story. Giving us as immigrants, as first generation immigrants who are struggling, that I am done. It is not done. This is a land of opportunity. Jennifer, within this short period where she couldn't even speak in English, not, not that she was, she was nothing, she was a university professor, a mathematics teacher, <laughs> and she come here and she cannot even find an apartment to rent. And now she's a city councillor. If she can, we can. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much um, for providing this opportunity for share my personal story. Wow. And because every time... When I share my personal story, I got, I got, I become stronger awesome. because I know. For me, there's a long road. There's still a long way for me to go. Wow! And then this long way, not only for myself, this long for us. way is for all of us awesome. to go awesome. to achieve that our city's diversity and inclusion by. Why you really be refract every aspect in our city, in our society? Wow, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you. And then I'm so glad to <laughs> meet <you>. wonderful <laughs> ladies here. <laughs> thank you. This is so beautiful. So I, I hope one day I can hear your story. And yes. Story. Yes. I believe we have we lots of have in so com- lots in common. Oh mm-hmm. yes. Like when you told you said yeah. that story about looking for a place to rent, I'm like, wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.